Hello everybody, this is Christian Hanahar, and today I want to talk to you guys about Full Moon. Now, I have been seeing comments before when I talk about Full Moon, I'll bring up Charles Band, and I'll talk about some of the movies that I love, and people will usually say, I've got to get into that, I've got to check some of those out. So let's, let's do a video, and I'm going to make this like the beginner's guide to Full Moon. I want to show you guys how to get into this library of films from Charles Band, and where to start, and things as such. And I'll give you a brief history on Charles. I'm not going to go through everything the man's done because he's got a very illustrious career with a lot of things that I could talk about. But before we talk about Full Moon, it's important to note that before Full Moon, Charles Band was a very busy man. He ran a company called Empire Pictures. Now, if you're a, f a collector of Scream Factory, you very well may could own some of these titles. Movies like The Dungeon Master and Eliminators. Movies like Ghost Town. Movies like Troll. Which he did, which was directed by John Carl Buechler, who did Friday Part 7. And then some more notable titles that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. Reanimator is a film he worked on. Dolls is a movie that made a big splash. And in my opinion, one of the biggest films he ever pr produced, The Ghoulies. And... Around the late 80s, Charles was going to exit Empire Pictures. Now, I don't exactly know what happened. I don't know if Charles was not happy with the direction of the company. I don't know if he wanted to make certain types of films that he couldn't get made. But he decided he was going to go his own way. And he started a, comp a company in the very late 80s called Full Moon Features. Now, they were a company that was going to uh, be in his vision unequivocally they were going to be a company that would be all about what he wanted to make and so he started full moon now full moon started in the very late 80s and he made a big splash with a certain movie that we're going to talk about so when it comes to getting into full moon i think there are certain eras of full moon you know and i think by far the greatest era so far is what i call the golden era and that is from around 1989 to about 1995 or 6. Now these are going to be some titles that I think would be very, very great for you guys to get into if you're going to start checking out some Full Moon movies. And the number one title, without question, that you should jump into if you haven't seen any Full Moon movies yet, is the 1989 classic Puppet Master. Now this is a movie that Charles Band had wanted to make for years and years. And, you know, it didn't really come to fruition until we got to you know, 1989 when we made this movie, the classic first film. Now, he had made movies like Dolls, and he had made other films that are close to what this this was, but he had the title Puppet Master in, in his mind for a while, and he's like, I want to make this film. And so he crafted a story, then he got very talented people involved and created Puppet Master. This was a way to, great way to launch off the brand. Now, this movie did not go out theatrically. Full Moon got distribution from Paramount Pictures back in the day to distribute the movies on home video. And that was a big, big deal for, for Full Moon and Charles. You know, Paramount were very big supporters of Full Moon back in the day. You know, when horror was seemingly dying in the theaters in the 90s, Charles Band was very busy keeping uh, movies stacked on the shelves in the in the rental stores and you could not go on the horror section in the early 90s without seeing full moon without seeing this label full moon on the side of the movies so this is the seminal classic film that charles put out with his label full moon features in the beginning and it's called puppet master now this is one of my all-time favorite movies on the planet puppet master is probably top 10 for me now this is a great film about andre toulon the, the puppet master who escaped uh nazi germany and he was wanted uh when he escaped and in the beginning of the movie he hides his puppets because he's created this this reagent of sorts, kind of like Free Animator, that animate his puppets and give them life. And you've got a great cast of puppets. You've got Blade right there. You've got uh, Jester, and you've got others such as Leech Woman and, and Pinhead, and they're very, very creepy. They scared me horribly as a kid. So this is obviously going to be the best place to start when getting into Full Moon. And... Honestly, I would recommend immediately after that 
jumping right into the classic Puppet Master 2. Now, Puppet Master 2 is a great sequel from Charles Band, and it came out very quickly after the first one. Again, these movies did not go out theatrically. But one thing to note, I did hear Charles talk about when the original Puppet Master was made, he did have select, like, a couple regional showings, if memory serves. But theatrically, worldwide, no. But the cool thing about these movies, and the best compliment I could give it, is when people talk about Puppet Master, till this day, people mistake that that movie was a theatrical movie because it's so well made. The budgets were still pretty healthy for Full Moon during this time, too. That's something to note. So when you watch these movies, you could very well say to yourself, yeah, I could have saw that in theaters. I wouldn't have been surprised. These are really well made films for... You know, the modest budgets, but still they had budgets back then. So going into Puppet Master 2 right, off the, right after that, I think, is a great way to keep your full moon uh, journey going. Because you've got some great puppet in introduced in this movie, such as uh, Torch. And he is mean. And you can see how he kills people. He torches people. Now this one is when they go up to ba uh, Bodega Bay, which is the hotel that Andre Toulon was staying at. And they're trying to see if they can encounter ghosts and spirits, but they come up with a little bit more than what they bargained for when they run into these suckers, and possibly more people from the first movie. So it's a great second entry into this franchise. Some people think that this is the best one, and I, I don't argue that, although I think the first one is still the best one. And before we dive into some other titles, I do recommend going right directly into Puppet Master 3 after that because this movie is very special for a number of reasons. Puppet Master 3, you know, does so many things wrong and Charles really struck gold with this movie and I'll tell you why. If you're going to make a part 3, there's a few absolute don'ts that you never want to do. The first don't is never do prequels, you know, <laughs> and never shoot it in the same year and release it in the same year, basically, as your part two. They came out very close to each other. Those are two big don'ts to make your movie guarantee it's going to fail. Not only did he succeed with this movie, honestly, even over part two, this is the one that a lot of people consider the best one, Toulon's Revenge, because you've got this great introduction of Six Shooter, as you can see, the, the six-handed... Uh, cowboy with the guns and it's a timepiece, so it takes you back to nazi germany during the world war and it's really 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 good so going right into puppet master 3 and going through the first three is a great way to start your full moon story off and your journey off and you could keep going to four and five but we can talk about that later after that i really recommend going into what could quite possibly be his best made film ever. That is called Subspecies. Now, Subspecies is classic horror with a great vampire. A vampire that looks a lot like Nosferatu. He's got the long fingers. He's got a creepy face. And a man named Anders Hove plays the vampire. Now, Subspecies is a great movie. Now, there's actually more than these three. But what I would recommend doing... I don't know if this triple pack, pack is still available. I mean, you could snip all of this in the bud if you wanted to and get Full Moon Direct, you know, the streaming service, and all this is on there. And I think that's $4 a month. It's a great streaming service. But if you're a physical media guy, I can guarantee you right now, getting these three movies is well worth your time. The first three subspecies are great films. I love these. Again, this is a movie, if you watch it, you could have probably said, well, I could have saw that in the theater back in the day. Maybe I just missed it. It's also noticeable that Angus Scrimm is in the first subspecies. These are really, really great movies. Again, I'll hear people speculate over which one's the best one. I've heard it for all three. Me, personally, I think I've got to go with subspecies two. Bloodstone is the best one. Although the first one holds a very special place in my heart because the first time I watched this movie, I was so impressed by it but bloodlust 3 does not disappoint either so going into subspecies is a great way to kick off going from the first three puppet masters and then swapping it up these are all during the golden era by the way so puppet master 1 2 and 3 are all within a couple of years 89 to about 91 the next thing i'd recommend is another classic one thing charles band liked a lot was sci-fi blended with horror 
we're going to want to check out a movie called Doll Man. What a ridiculous name for a movie, right? What would you expect with a name like Doll Man? But Doll Man is awesome. Now, Tim Thomerson is that is that hero, that middle-aged hero that we never knew he wanted, kind of like Tom Atkins and Charles Bronson. And Doll Man is a really cool movie about this guy who arrives on planet Earth, and he is tiny. And it's a really fun action science fiction movie. And it actually has some really cool practical effects in here that were very, they're very modest, but they look really good. You know, and the filming of this was gorgeous because, you know, all this was shot on beautiful film. And Charlie re renovated all these movies and they look fantastic. So, Doll Man is a great way to step it up and, and continue your full moon journey and get some science fiction action in here. And after you do that, I would go right up and check out a movie called Demonic Toys. Now, when you say Demonic Toys, you kind of say to yourself, well, that kind of sounds seems a little reminiscent of Puppet Master. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of Charlie ripping himself off and doing another type of movie with the small killers. But Demonic Toys is really, really fun and really good. I actually reviewed Demonic Toys not long ago, and I love it. I mean, you've got some really creepy monsters in there. You've got a jester. Not a jester. You've got a, a, a jack-in-the-box clown, a talking baby with black eyes, a killer robot, and Terror Teddy. And it's actually a really fun movie with some cool angles and twists in there. So I would definitely recommend checking out Doll Man and then going right up to Demonic Toys. And a great way to cap off your full moon you know, journey, if you're getting into full moon, is right here with both of these movies. From the Golden Era Still, directed by Stuart Gordon, who had a great relationship with Charles Band back in the day. He did a lot of work with him on those Empire movies, and he continued to do work with them on full moon titles. The Pit and the Pendulum. And the great Castle Freak. Now, Castle Freak is presumed to be, by a lot of Full Moon fans, quite possibly the best Full Moon title. It is very good, and it stars Barbara Crampton and Jeffrey Combs. Now, Pit and the Pendulum is great, but you know, let's say by this point, if if you've taken my advice and you've dove into a lot of these movies and you're getting a little burnt, but you want to get one more in. Castle Freak is quite frankly one of the best. People love this movie and I can absolutely see why it is just a dang good movie and it's filmed in a real castle and it's interesting to note that this movie was filmed in a castle that was owned by Charles Band at the time. Now I don't think he owns that anymore but what a movie and it's scary, it's good, it's a little sleazy and it's well, it's well made. So Castle Freak is a great way to cap off your journey and your soiree into Full Moon if you haven't seen it. And this is kind of like the height of Full Moon. And after this, things start to dwindle a little bit. I think Charles' relationship with Paramount was getting a little weakened. And he wasn't getting as many distribution rights anymore from some of his future films. Now, there are a lot of titles that are still in this golden era that I haven't talked about yet. But if you guys enjoy this video and you want me to do a part two, I'd be more than happy to show you more titles from this era that you could dive into. And then we could talk about the later years of Full Moon and some of the stuff he's doing later with like Ginger Dead Mad and all that. But Castle Freak is a great way to, to cap off your initial run for full moon movies. So I hope I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm just a really big fan of Charles Band and Full Moon. They've been with me since I was a kid and I love his movies. I've got this book here. You know, this will be perfect for a part two. We could talk about the Transfers films. We could talk about other movies. And uh, I, I'm just very excited. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if uh, if, if you're new to Full Moon, if you think this is a video that was cool, and if maybe you're a fan of Full Moon and you've seen some of these movies, but it's been a long time and you want to revisit them, let me know. If this video does well and you guys liked it, we'll talk more about Full Moon and what other stuff they have to offer. And my part two, let's say you uh, guys check out those movies and you want to say, Christian, where should we go next? I'd be more than happy to give you my advice and help on that. I'm no expert, but I am a big Charles Band fan, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time. We'll see you guys later.